Good morning, friends. It is currently 4.20 in the morning. And I'm filming a video I was hoping that I wasn't gonna have to film. If you're new here, my name is Lauren. I am a mom to four boys. And we live in Alaska. I'm currently in Denver, Colorado, staying at the Ronald McDonald house because I am pregnant with twins. They are identical twins. They are sharing a placenta. And over the last two weeks, they have started showing signs of twin twin transfusion syndrome, where they are just sharing too many blood vessels across the placenta that it is putting both of them in danger. We have been flirting with this for the last several weeks, being watched very carefully by doctors. And unfortunately, yesterday here in Denver, they decided we had reached a threshold where surgery is necessary. So like I said, it's 4.20 in the morning. I am about to take my first Uber ride ever to the Children's Hospital here in Denver. Oh, all the feelings. It's been very emotional. You might notice I'm alone. We sent my husband, Mark, back home to Alaska three days ago. Our kids really needed to see one of their parents for a few days. They were having, it's just been a lot for them too. And so he is currently on an airplane and he will be meeting me at the hospital. He'll be getting an Uber from the airport to the hospital and be meeting me there. So I'm grateful he can come. This is where we're at. And we're praying for miracles today to save these little girls. The doctor went through everything with us yesterday. A lot of things we already knew. Some scary things that I'm not gonna get into here. Um, I will put a link to twin to twin, twin twin transfusion down in the description below if you wanna learn more about what they're doing. I'm getting fetal scopic laser surgery today. So they will put like a tube in and pretty much with a laser cauterize any blood vessels on the placenta that are sharing between the two babies. And then um, one sign of twin twin transfusion is one of your babies has a lot of fluid. Currently, we call it baby A, is has over 10 centimeters, sometimes as much as 13 centimeters of fluid around her. She's in like an Olympic size pool. Baby B yesterday was the worst we'd ever seen her. We could only find little pockets of one centimeter around her. They are both moving. They are both still healthy. There are other things that could be happening that are not happening so far, but we're just trying to get ahead of it. They're thankfully both still moving around. They're about the same size. So there's lots of blessings in here. These are good doctors here in Denver. They perform these surgeries often. This surgery was not available in Alaska. There's actually only like 20 surgery centers across the United States that perform these type of surgeries. So that is why we are in Denver. I'm gonna go wait in the lobby and catch my Uber to the hospital. So you may be wondering what happened in the last day that made them decide for us to have surgery. A few things changed. I had an appointment on Monday and then I had an appointment on Thursday. At the appointment on Monday, we were at like 12 inches of fluid for baby A and three inches of fluid for baby B, which didn't make us feel concerned because baby B still had three centimeters of fluid. Yesterday, like I said, she had less than one centimeter that we could find around her. Stage, there are stages 
that they use to help them decide when surgery is necessary. Stage two is when they perform surgery. And we reached stage two yesterday because we could barely see baby B's bladder. It wasn't really filling up because she didn't have enough fluid in there anymore to be really filling up her bat bladder and urinating because that's what makes the amniotic fluid is them drinking and then peeing and she wasn't having enough. So that put us back at stage two. But they also were looking at their heart and their blood flow. Thankfully their blood flow through their umbilical cords are still really good. But baby A who has the too much fluid was starting to struggle with her heart. Because she was getting extra, her heart was getting a little bit sluggish because she was having to work extra hard with all that extra fluid. So we always think maybe it's baby B that's struggling so much because she doesn't have enough, but really they're both struggling because they don't have enough or they have too much. Both are unhealthy. And these babies are so connected that if we don't intervene, it's very likely that they would both pass away. Yeah. If you lose one, you lose both, which is a terrible thing to think about, but it has been our reality. I am 21 weeks pregnant, and the goal after surgery is to keep them in as long as possible. There are some risks of preterm labor because you are entering that amniotic sac. So I will be on light duty after this, especially for the like week and a half after. And then I just won't be lifting anything and I'll just be taking it easy when I head home. Um, they said no bed rest, but I do get to be a couch potato. And we just wanna keep them in as long as possible to let them develop after this surgery. And they've had great success with people going 10, 12, 14 weeks after surgery. So we're planning on having probably some smaller babies when they're born, but at least this will give them a chance to continue to grow because the outcome didn't look good if we did not intervene. Whew. Okay, my Uber is on its way. <sighs> Talking to you guys has helped me just stay calm this morning. Sleep was a bit elusive last night. I feel like I just more rested than slept. I think I was afraid of not waking up. Oh, there's my backup, backup, backup alarm. I was just afraid that I wouldn't wake up being here alone if I did finally get into a deep sleep, but I barely, I know I fell asleep a few times, but it was mostly just a rest. So thanks for keeping me company this morning while I got ready. I'm gonna go head to the Uber. early it didn't take very long to get here it's 505 my uber driver was very interested in Alaska kept me very distracted as I told him about our life up there and then he asked me what I did so I told him about YouTube so I'm here I'm ready to go um, I gotta put this gown on I've gotta clean my belly because that's where they're going in through is through the side of my belly with the scope. So I'm gonna go wash my belly and get changed. <sighs> Maybe I can relax for a little bit before the doctors start coming in, hopefully. Well, friends, it's been about 12 hours since we had surgery this morning. I was in no place to film when I came out of surgery. It was a pretty long surgery, about two and a half hours, and the last half hour felt like I was done. But thankfully, it was a successful surgery. The doctor said that they um, went through and used the laser on 25 different veins that were connecting between the placenta of the two girls. So hopefully that will be the answer to this twin twin transfusion. 
that it will stop and we will see improvement. We will see baby B start to gain fluid. It will take a couple weeks before we will see the results of that. Um, they will come in and check me tomorrow morning and see how the girls are doing. Thankfully, they've been um, watching my uterus all day. Um, I have a monitor on right now here and I have not been contracting because sometimes when you mess with that uterus, it can go, it can start to think that it needs to go into labor, which we do not want. We need these girls to stay in there for another 12 to 14 weeks. So oh, we're very grateful. The doctor said it went really well. The last step of the surgery before closing up is to use a vacuum to take some of the fluid out of baby A. They said they took out a liter of fluid, my stomach. I realized it had gotten big fast these last couple weeks as baby A was having all that fluid. So I definitely feel smaller today. Um, it took several hours, probably three or four, maybe even five hours for the spinal block to wear off. And I was able to finally get up and walk around, use the bathroom. They took out my catheter. So it was a long day of recovery. Um, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now. They did put a couple stitches in where the, um, where the laser goes in, but the placenta itself, not the placenta, but the um, sac itself doesn't really have any way to self heal. So they, it just kind of blocks it has two layers and those two layers kind of overlap to keep the fluid in um, hopefully it will stay that way usually it does this is all amazing that they're able to do these things we're so grateful for modern day medicine we will check with the doctors tomorrow then we stay here in Denver for five days and then we will see the doctors in five days and then as long as everything's going well, we can go home and I'll start seeing our doctor once a week the, in Alaska. So that's where we're at. Surgery was successful. I'm feeling good. Mark's here. He's over here hanging out. We're going to watch a movie together. We just had some dinner delivered from the hospital and we're just taking it one step at a time. The boys are at different family members houses for the weekend so that they can play with cousins and hang out with different family members and then they will all go back to our house and grandma and grandpa will watch them again for a couple days so grateful that we are at this point where the decision whether or not we needed surgery is done because we were just sitting on that for like two weeks it was so much back and forth and going home felt really scary because I was always afraid I would just be sent right back. And so I'm glad that we, the decision was made. <clears throat> we'll keep you updated. Good morning, friends. Beautiful sunrise here in Denver. It's about 7.20. I think our doctor and sonographer are coming about 7.30. Just having a little morning juice box. The nurse only had to come in one time in the night, give me two pills and check my blood pressure, which if you've ever stayed in a, in a hospital, like they usually come in a lot more, but they didn't have to check me that often. So I think we'll be out of here pretty quick today. Maybe after breakfast, we'll see how this appointment goes. Well friends, I just got up from a little rest. We are back at the Ronald McDonald house which means that our ultrasound this morning went well. It seems like the girls responded really well to the surgery. They survived the night and both had strong heartbeats. Both were moving around. It looked very different in there with the fluid that they had drained out. Uh, baby A had, what did they measure that at? Like six centimeters or five centimeters today? Was it four? Four and a half? Six. Yeah. A whole lot less. So baby A had about, I think it was around five centimeters where she had been pushing 11, 12, sometimes even 13 centimeters of fluid. And baby B still had about the same, but she was starting to get some pockets and her bladder filled up while we were um, doing the sonogram. So that is good news. That's what we want to see. Oh, so we're back here for a few days. We got to go back and get a five day 
update on how they're doing. So we will go back on Wednesday. We will see the fetal medicine doctor get another sonogram, but we will also be seeing the cardiologist because they say by five days, you can usually see if the heart has started to pump normal again. If you remember, baby A's heart was having a little bit of a hard time. So not everything was perfect in the sonogram today. There's, it, we're gonna continue to have ups and downs, but the babies survived the night and that feels great. They're now laying like this way almost on top of each other instead of left and right. So that's a little bit different. It was took us a few minutes to kind of orient ourselves and figure out who was who in there. Now to me, I am feeling tired. Done a lot of reading and writing thank you cards and just relaxing. And um, I am tender on my back where I got my spinal. I'm also tender on my stomach. But they gave me medicine to keep my uterus from contracting. And I didn't have any contractions. Haven't had any since I got home or got here to the Ronald McDonald house. So, so that's good. My body is not trying to go into labor, which is one of the worries when you have the surgery because you're messing with your placenta and you're messing with your uterus and you're messing with the sack of waters. Those are all things that work in labor. So thankfully we seem to be doing well and my cervix was still really good and long. So a lot of information, but just know that we're doing well. The boys are doing well with their cousins and their aunts and uncles and now Mark and I are going to go have some dinner and maybe watch a movie tonight. Just try and relax. Okay friends, tomorrow is five days post-op. I'm feeling pretty good. Been able to walk around, rest. I even did some editing again today and I know some of you will think you don't need to edit, but it actually gives me a little bit of a sense of normalcy. Mark had work to do, so I edited and it just keeps me occupied. If I sit and scroll social media, I feel yucky. So um, I'm glad that I have something to do and editing videos has been good because these last couple days have been a little bit difficult as you're like wanting updates and five days felt like a long time to wait and see how the babies are doing. Yeah, we just felt really anxious wanting to know there was so much drama and and kind of fear and emotions around the surgery and the rush and then afterwards and I mean things were great but just anxious to know what's going on and uh, one thing that's just been super positive is reading hundreds and hundreds of just lovely comments about people praying for us and you know I was sitting there reading them and I just got emotional just thank you we appreciate it I mean people all over the world and even though we're just feel alone here in this kind of room we're in sometimes it, it feels like you're with us so thank you we appreciate it yeah that's been really really helpful um over these last few weeks anytime that I feel down I know there are amazing comments um from our community here and from our friends and family at home just um encouraging us along because this is not where we expected to be with the twins um you know you never imagine having a difficult pregnancy like this so we are getting ready for bed but we have appointments tomorrow they um want us to come in see the cardiologist for two hours and then we'll get to see our fetal medicine doctor and then we'll get to find out if we stay here or go home yep. and we really hope we get to go home because oh we miss our boys and just you know yeah it'd be great to go home so hopefully that's where we're at tomorrow but we'll do the next right thing that's all that's all that we can hope for is the next right thing so i'm not gonna leave lauren again i made that mistake <laughs> once i'm not gonna leave her again it's so. hard to stay though mark has a full-time job you know it's it's yeah. not like and we have four kids at home yeah you know, I, you know i felt it was awful when i was at home and couldn't be here with her right before the surgery it was awful so but thankfully I felt at peace. I felt at peace though. Yeah, thanks. I knew you were I knew you were coming yeah. and I felt at peace. Heavenly Father was holding me up in that instance. So all right. We'll okay. let you know what happens tomorrow. Well friends, you may notice that we are back home. Today is Friday. Miss Luna's here, of course. She's been hanging out with me all day. 
<sighs> this is probably the hardest thing I've ever filmed. <laughs> so it took me a couple days. Um, we'll see if I can get through it. Oh, I thought I was feeling okay, so I thought I'd pull out the camera. Mark took the boys to go ice skating on our frozen lakes. And I'm home for a few minutes by myself. So the last time I filmed, we were getting ready for our follow-up appointment. That was Wednesday. So I filmed Tuesday night. We had our follow-up appointments Wednesday. First we saw the cardiologist, the sonogram for the cardiologist. So they just checked out the baby's hearts and um, everything seemed pretty good. Cardiologist came in, she said, hearts look great. They were covering really well. So that was really good news. And then we had our normal sonogram and Mark and I were so happy with what we were seeing. Um, <sighs> Baby B had so much more fluid. There was like this clear distinction. It was almost hard to tell who was who now because before Baby B was so pushed up against the side. Now they were both had about five centimeters of fluid. It looked so beautiful to see that they both had room to move around. Um, we were so encouraged by that. <sighs> they did all their measurements that they needed to do. And then, you know, the doctor's watching this from another room and he did all his, he was looking at all the scans. And he came in and unfortunately he didn't have very good news. The girls apparently did really well from the surgery, you know, with the fluids and things, but they had developed a new problem called TAPS. And it's pretty much that one baby is now anemic and the other baby is polyanemic. And they think this happens because they somehow missed a couple tiny blood vessels when they were going through. There's also a part of my placenta that they could not get to, and they think maybe it could be in that area. Um, and it's not good. And he told us he loves to be wrong, but he thinks that we will lose at least one of the babies. Unless this somehow miraculously reverses and possibly lose both babies. I'm currently 22 weeks. This just doesn't feel real. It feels so heartbreaking. But Mark has been so wonderful and supporting me. We've both been just emotional. We've just cried so much. <sighs> and having to tell the boys was really hard. Um, they just wanted to be close to us after and just, they said, can we just do something that get our minds off it? So we watched a movie together because that was a lot for them to process. They thought we were coming home with good news. We didn't want to tell them over the phone. But we're not giving up hope. We're praying for a miracle that this will reverse and the babies will be fine and we can make it to 28 weeks at least, if not 30, and we can bring these beautiful girls home. That's what we're hoping for. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around anything else because we already love these babies so much. We have so many people cheering us on and praying for us. Even though you don't know all the facts, you know, in real time, the amount of prayers going up for these babies is just 
so overwhelming in a good way and for me and for the family. So, I don't know if there would ever be a time I could film this part of the video without just having a really hard time. But this is our reality right now. Um, so we flew home yesterday and um, it was so good to be with the boys and to be home and in our own bed and just able to cuddle with Miss Luna here. Um, I was supposed to have a doctor's appointment today, but I called them during our layover yesterday and said, would it make any difference if I came in today or came in Monday so I can just have a couple days to be home with my family? And the doctor was reviewing my case and they called me back and said, we could see you on Monday. So I didn't want to come home and then just rush off to doctor's appointments because Mark wants to come with me as well. So we'll go Monday while the boys are at school and Mark's at work. He'll come with me to the doctor. And I'm just hoping that something was off. The girls were moving so much in the ultrasound. That was the other thing. They just look so healthy and happy in there. It's so hard to hear that they're not. And I know that they're professionals and they know better, but I'm just hoping maybe they were moving too much and they weren't able. The way that they measure the taps is through this blood vessel in the brain. And when the one is anemic, the blood is rushing through too fast. It's like water running through a pipe. And the other baby, baby B, is polyanemic. She's getting too many red blood cells and it's coming through like more like peanut butter or a milkshake through the blood vessel and they can only tell that through that blood vessel in the head and it's so tiny it's so hard to get so i'm just holding on to either they miscalculated or there just can be i've heard of miracles of it reversing that like maybe it was just after surgery it was still trying to work itself out and that's what i'm holding on to for now so I'm not sure I did f Mark and I filmed a video while we were in Denver co going Costco shopping well in those days that we were waiting so that video is going to come out and it's going to be like what why are we going back to this but it was a very special Costco trip for us um and we felt like we should do it while we were there waiting to hear about what the babies were going to do so that was one of the ways that we spent our time. So that will come out and you'll be like, what, why is this? But it's hard to get these videos out in a chronological order. But I'm not sure when I'll film the next video. Because things just feel really heavy right now. Unless we have any big updates. Um, may just need some time to just be with my family and relax and I know you guys will all understand that we love you we are thankful for your continued prayers and encouragement this is just really hard But I'll be back when I feel ready. And I don't know if that'll be a week from now, a day from now. I'm not sure. Right now I just have to take it an hour at a time, a day at a time. And put it all over to God because it's too big for me to carry. Love you guys. 
I know so many of you come here for like an uplifting place. And I know we'll get back to that. Hopefully with two beautiful baby girls with us. We just gotta wait and see. Alright. Love you guys.